Before we start today's video team, these We Don't Quit mentality belts are live. You can get it from Two Pood if you're in America or you can get it from The Hustle Made if you're in the UK because uh, the shipping was crazy. So we're doing a pre-order. So if you order it now, you get it in about four weeks. Pre-order closes next Tuesday. So if you want to get one of these, it'll be the only Two Pood belt you can get in the UK. They're, they're the best. Link will be down below. I literally wrote that We Don't Quit over and over and over on a piece of paper until I got it right. So yeah, literally handwritten. Smash that like button, enjoy the video, and there's a tiny, tiny little bit of fun stuff right, right, right at the end. Don't miss it, it's like after the credits. If no one's told you today, you're an absolute legend. Starting the video the way I usually end it, because why not? Welcome back to another episode, uh, another news video. This one around semi-finals, gonna try and keep it short, sharp, sweet. So let's just jump right into it. Some huge news broke yesterday regarding Mal O'Brien. She took to Instagram to say that she wouldn't be competing at the semi-finals this weekend after coming off winning the Open and the quarterfinals. Obviously, this news coming just a couple of days before she's due to compete, saying that with a heavy heart, I'd like to share that I won't be competing at the semi-finals this weekend. Sometimes we face personal challenges that demand our attention and care. It's important to prioritize our well-being and embrace the support of loved ones. Whilst I won't be competing, I'm grateful for the understanding and encouragement from my coach, Matt Fraser, and my hard work pays off training team, friends, family, and fans. Their unconditional support means the world to me. Remember, life isn't just about winning trophies and achieving goals, it's about finding balance, taking care of ourselves and cherishing the moments that truly matter. I'll be taking this time to focus on what's important to me and I appreciate your understanding during this period. I wish the best of luck to my teammates and competitors. Reading that for me, like it's, it's, it's not a decision that's obviously been taken lightly. It's a, uh, first and foremost, Mal, you're a legend. CrossFit is such a demanding sport, you know, like when you look at CrossFit compared to training for other stuff, the hours it demands on the body, long morning sessions, long night sessions, you gotta be good at everything. It's not just the physical side of stuff, it's the mental battle and it's a constant year round, year on year commitment. And it's a lot to handle for anyone. Mal here's obviously made a huge decision about her season and has opted to look after herself and look at what's important to her. She's only 19 years old. You know, there's still a hell of a lot of time ahead of her. And when you think back to when you were 17, 18, 19, growing up, obviously she was a teen games athlete as well. Those are some of the most pivotal and important years of your life. In terms of maturing as an adult, in terms of socializing with people, your age, life experiences, hormones. And with CrossFit, especially at the level that she's doing it, and you really don't have time for that. Also, I can't imagine the amount of stress that's been put on Mal this year, you know, part of it's kind of like the media fault saying that she's one of the best in the world and that she could win it this year. I just kind of understand it, you know, and I feel like it's a big thing to say you could walk away from a potentially winning season to look after yourself, but yourself comes first, medals and whatever, like, <laughs> this, this bit's gonna sound really cheesy, but team, you, like, literally you only get one life, you know what I mean? So. Sometimes decisions may feel hard or like they shouldn't be done, but it is what it is. And we may see Mal back, we may not. We'll just find out. Hopefully, you know, everything goes down swimmingly. She feels great in a couple of years or a year or whenever it is. I'll tell you what though, looking at the comments and uh, the posts and everything, she got loads of love on the back of this. And um, the support and the people that she has around her in this CrossFit community, especially top people you guys are, all ears. It's crazy actually when we've been to events, you know, like all athletes, especially like the ones that have been around at the top that you've seen them, they're there for each other, you know? And I, I like, I love that about this CrossFit community. Obviously there's some rivalries and whatnot, you know how it is, but the majority is just love. And especially for something like this. But now going into the semi-finals and the CrossFit games, it now, it doesn't open up that top spot. It wasn't a guaranteed thing for Mal, but it just, you know, who, who's gonna take it? If you look at the top 20 at the CrossFit Games last year, six of them aren't competing this year. Tia Claire Toomey obviously finished first. She's had a baby. Congratulations, actually, that's another bit of news. Congratulations, Tia Claire Toomey has now officially had a baby. And uh, Shane Orr rocked up to the box, full dad mode, and uh, embraced it, and I love it. And I love to see how happy they are with it. It just, yeah, little to me. Second place last year, Mal O'Brien. Obviously, this is the news that we've just talked about. Cara Saunders, who we're gonna see in a couple of days when we go to Australia. She's obviously pregnant, and so won't be competing this year. Hayley Adams, again, taking the season off, looking after herself. Christy Aramo O'Connell wants to focus on other stuff. And Lucy Campbell is out due to a wrist injury. Some very strong athletes out of the field, but also kind of that. I'm very excited to see the top 10 women this year. And I can't tell you who's gonna win it. Third down to sixth last year, super strong, like, 
Laura could win it, Danielle Brandon could win it, Brooke Wells could win it, Emma Lawson could win it. Recently we trained with Ellie Turner, I wouldn't, I would not bet against her. Jacqueline Dolstrom, yeah, just, <laughs> I could name you the whole top 20. Now athletes will be peaking for semi-finals, so they qualify for the games, but it won't be their final form. And since the last video, we've had all the individual tests released. So with all the athletes doing the same tests, we should get a good, you know, look and comparison as to who is currently trending. Looking like they're gonna be hot at the games. Although, you know, you have to look at like this first week, compared to the last week, they're gonna have a lot more preparation time to do the workouts, practice them over and over, and see how athletes do it over these first couple of weeks, get some ideas. Think about it. Now when looking at the workouts, they look pretty cool. First one just looks like some grunt work. Second one, we get a ring complex. We've never seen a ring complex before of a toes to rings, a muscle up and a dip in a ruck, which uh, Rich Froning said caused his shoulder injury. There's a lot of strain on the shoulder. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna complain about my shoulders all this season, but I just, I can specifically track back to doing ring muscle ups with a ruck is how I tore my tore something in my shoulder. Yeah. yeah. And that's where my shoulder what pain part, started. What part of it is like, the, I've never done it. So what part of it it's is just where- It's just a weird, like it puts you in, like it pulls you back. Oh. I've done- And you have to kind of pull with, into it. I've done muscle ups with a vest and the weight is front yeah. and back and kind of even yeah. what you're using. Also we saw with that, you know, the one with the 50 ring dips, a load of pecs and shoulder injuries too. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Then workout three, we have a repeat, which is the semi-finals Linda, also known as the three bars of death. Let's be having you! Come on! Deadlifts, dumbbell bench presses, and squat cleans. So slightly different to what we saw in the previous regionals where they did bench press, this time it's heavy dumbbells, like 60 pounds for the females, 90 pounds for the males. Obviously not fully comparable, but the fastest male on earth for that workout in 2018 was Jonathan Gibson with a time of 12.24, just ahead of James Newbury who got 12.25, and Matt Fraser who got 12.40. And on the female side, Katrin Davis' daughter set the fastest time at 12.50, and second in the world, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, 13.03. So it'll be interesting to see because obviously I feel like the CrossFitters are getting fitter and faster, but also the dumbbells may come into play with stabilizing and it may be better, it may be faster, it may... Who knows? And then obviously test four and five, they're, they're the ones that I'm looking at, I'm like, they're gonna be fun. We get a max snatch. But we don't get it on its own. Athletes have to run 800 meters before and then in that six minute time cap, hit something big. Yeah. Emma McQuaid tried this and uh <laughs> If it sounds like if it sounds like the dog's eating in this clip, it's cause Getting them gains. Yep. Then two minutes after hitting that max snatch, they go to workout five, eight snatches and then 800 meter run, basically jacking the heart rate up off the eight snatches and running 800 meters flat out. We're gonna see some jelly legs off the back of that. And then, test six is the one with handstand walk pirouettes, which um, always reminds me of, you know, that bat game where you put your head on the bat and you spin round. Obviously do that just with a bit of fitness as well included, it's gonna be, it's gonna be naughty. Two seated legless rope climbs as well. Not just normal, making it a little harder. And the final workout, test seven, just looks like a, you know, go hard, don't stop, hold on. <laughs> giggity giggity, that's what she said. We'll see some failures on the final set, I reckon. Send it and either crash and burn or do amazing. A load of the athletes are already on their way to the first semi-finals, the North America East. Proven team's got a pool. They're doing some bombs, that's cool. But yeah, just in some very quick news, as it's now 1.37 p.m. What time are we leaving for the airport? Uh, 20 past six. Yeah, and my case currently looks like this. <laughs> Nothing in it. Absolutely nothing. You, you wonder why I get stressed. 
Huh? You wonder why I get stressed. What are you stressing for? We got this. And I'm gonna need at least half an hour to cry whilst we say bye to the dogs for a couple of weeks. And I. Sam Dancer put up a cool post, basically saying I got my official invite to the CrossFit Games when I was laying in bed post-surgery and I was scared that I wouldn't be the same anymore. And I was right. I'm not, I'm better mentally, physically, spiritually, and relationally. I don't know what that means. Don't let life chew you up and spit you out. Find out what happens when you don't give up. We don't quit mentality. He's obviously got his invite to the CrossFit Games in the 35 to 39 this year. If you're going through an injury, manage it well, but don't quit. You know, you never know where you're gonna be. It's not the end of the world. And then this tickled me. Mental how someone out there has eaten the most crisps in the world and doesn't even know they're about their achievement. It wouldn't be me, but I do love crisps. I'm sure someone out eats me on crisps. And then can we settle this debate, please, team, in the comments down below? One or two, you know? Also, thank you to Whoop for sponsoring this video. If you want to join Whoop, the best wearable on earth, there's a link down below. You'll get a free month and a free Whoop 4.0. 96% recovered today. Damn. I can guarantee it won't be that number after the flight. And I'm going to leave you with this video created by Brent Fakowski. Great video. If movements from the semi-finals were done the way they were named. It's going pretty viral on Instagram and I can see why. Wait, wait, wait. Just trying to figure out how we fit the two dogs in the suitcase. Can we put this on like a little seatbelt? Yeah, what do you think? All the way to ours. Good girls. Yeah. Good girls. Got a pile of t-shirts and then the dogs, the most important part. You're so beautiful. That was the surprise I thought. I thought it'd be funny to put the dogs in the suitcase, so I hope you enjoyed that part. Riley wants to come. She seems happy in there. Carla's like... Carla's so sad.